Well, good day, everybody that's on. I am Brad Sugars, Chairman and Founder of Action Coach. And today it is my pleasure to be sharing with you the business coach system. How do we actually build companies? After 30 years of doing this, uh, what is it that we do that gets the results that we get that transforms companies? And uh, I want to share with you that story and the framework behind that story here today to show you how to simply and happily build the work, life, and business of your dreams. Three main things on today's agenda. Number one, confidence. If I can help you build confidence where you had uncertainty in your business, then we're going to achieve our result. Number two, if I can get you clarity instead of confusion, then we're definitely on the right path. And number three, if I can help you unlock your true potential, that's what we're after. Yet, if nothing else, my job here today is to help you make more money in your business and lots of it. If that is good for you, I want you to, by the way, this is a participation event. If you're excited about making more money in your business, I want you to hit the chat window. Now, I'm going to make a rule. You got to get creative in the chat window, okay? You can't just say, yes, Brad, I agree with that. You have to give me a yes without using the word yes, okay? So give me a hey, yeah, or something like that. So yes, Ilmet, start typing. Coach Derek, Peter, I can see you guys on screen. Let me scroll through to see all the faces. If you do not have your camera on, please turn it on now. We're a participation event and we like everyone to hang out together. So turn those cameras on, unless of course you're sitting somewhere where we really don't want to see you on the camera. Uh, that would be a, an interesting thing. So what I need from you today is implementation. Nothing is more annoying than having taught someone years ago and then you meet up with them and they go, yeah, I'm still in the same position I was in back then. We got to take action. We got to do the things. I called it Action Coach for a real reason. Hey, cha-ching, I like that one. Definitely, I'm in, sure thing, heck yeah, affirmative soup. Poor soup has, hey, we're getting different languages here. This is a fairly fantastic thing. You know, um, Warren Buffett, and actually that's uh, the one where he's in the bright colored parrot shirt there. We were playing poker that night and uh, I went in all in suited ace king against Mr. Buffett and I didn't match a dang thing. He took me down with a pair of, I think it was like eights or something like that, but it would have been a good story, wouldn't it? But as he says, you only have to do a very few things right so long as you don't do too many things wrong. And if today all I do is stop you doing some things wrong, then we've succeeded at our mission. Does that make sense for everybody? You know, it's not just about getting it right. Sometimes it's about doing that. So do I have a deal? Are we ready to get started? Are we ready to take action? That is the question. So in three minutes or less, I got to give you my 30 years experience as to how we got here. 30 years ago, this guy, Rob Kiyosaki, you probably know him. He became famous with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Well, in the in the bottom center photo, there's Keith Cunningham, the guy that actually was uh, credited as the teacher of the Rich Dad. There's also Dolph DeRoosh. You might have seen him. Bill Shopoff, massive real estate. Dame DC Cordova, one of my original mentors. John Burley, real estate mentor. We're all teaching money in 1993. This is, yeah, look at the tall, lanky kid with the glasses. That's me. Well, that's what happened. And it got me in love with teaching. So I started teaching teaching. I started this little company called Action Coach. And uh, that's my first group of coaches right there. Bruce, front and center at the top there, still with me today, uh, out there teaching down in uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. Hamish on my right, you see, that's me with the orange shirt right on there, on brand back in those days, orange and blue. But the whole thing of starting Action Coach was this vision here. Yes, that's our original office. There you go, huh? Uh, world abundance through business re-education. That's the mission and vision of our organization. So you being here today are helping me achieve my vision. If I can help you grow your business, then I'm on mission. I'm on vision with everything I want to do uh, with my life. And yes, that is the original logo, hand-drawn by my friend Shaka. She drew that. But to give you an idea of what we do, uh, this is my team down in uh, Tampa, St. Pete. The Kais, Ford and Bob joined me originally. Now their daughter, Juliet, runs the business. And every time I think about the fact that I've been doing this for 30 years, I think about the fact that generations have shifted by what we do here today. And I want to help shift your generation. I want to help you be the leader of your generational shift for your business, your family, your future. And generation shifts are not things that you talk about. You see, when I say I've been doing this 30 years, I've been doing this 30 years. I've been on stages all across the world, thousands of stages doing this thing, big stages, small stages, big groups, writing books, teaching across the whole world. That one, I think that was like a big warehouse one. I think that was in like Liverpool or something like that. 
And every time I teach this stuff, it gets better for me because I learn every time I teach time and time again. Luckily, we get to do this in 83 countries. Uh, for my giving my first event in uh, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia in f- four or five days time as well. So still some new countries I get to explore. 30 years of teaching. Why do I share this with you? Because today is not about just a theory. Oh, yeah. And some fashion faux pas along the way. Um, But then look at that. Look at that young guy there. Right. That's uh, me in Perth, Western Australia. When I first started teaching, these double breasted suits were cool back then. Why do I show you all these photos? Because with 30 years of teaching, I've also got students who've been with me a long time. This is John. John's based down in Texas. Uh, 2005 is when John came to join me and started learning with me. Today, he does hundreds of millions of dollars, right? This is not theory. This is actual evidential proof because these are people that have been with me long enough to show you what actually happens. If you go on my YouTube channel, you go on the Action Coach YouTube channel, you'll see all the testimonials on there for people because we've been doing this so long that uh, my friends joke with me that now my my original franchisees, their kids are running their business and their kids were born when we started the company. Like that's how long we've been doing this. So that's why it's not just theory. Now, why do I want to bring up this? Well, Uh, Middle of COVID, my 50th birthday, I took the family down to Mexico to celebrate my 50th birthday, but I was teaching in my home. And yes, I stole my daughter's ring light to be able to teach, right? And if you notice, my boots are on the floor over there. I'm not even wearing shoes just to get the right height on the camera. I didn't even have a camera person. So I built myself a TV studio for my 50th birthday. And that's in my office now. So I'm able to teach all across the world. I've been able to record, implement and do stuff that we've never been able to do before and create enough learning for you to be able to understand exactly what it is we do and how we grow businesses. So um, Royal Armories in Leeds, is that where it was, Jackie? Thank you for telling me that. I always forget where that photo was. So there you go. So... What are we going to do today? Number one, I'm going to teach you the formula for success. Number two, I'm going to teach you the formula for growing a business. Number two, three, I'm going to teach you the formula for growing yourself. And number four, I'm going to teach you the framework that makes all of that happen. That's what we're going through today. But before we get into that, I have a question for you. See, dreams and goals don't happen unless you grow. And if you're willing to grow, then any dream and goal can happen. Now, the 80-20 rule still exists. Only 20% of people are actually going to do the work. And if you're one of those 20% of people, which I guess you are, how do I know you're one of those 20% of people? Not only did you register to come on the webinar, but you actually showed up. You're actually watching the whole thing. You're actually taking notes. So we already know you're in the 20%, but you've got to understand, learn before you earn. Are you willing? And again, give me a yes without the word yes. Give me a yes without the word yes. Type it in. Are you willing to learn and grow into your goals? 16 years of age, I told one of my friends that I was going to retire when I was 25. I financially retired the first time around at age 26. And uh, But when, when he told his dad that Brad says he's going to retire, his dad decided to tell me how that couldn't happen, won't happen, and definitely won't happen for us. Well, the fact is what he didn't realize is that 16-year-old Brad was willing to learn and grow. 16-year-old Brad was willing to read books, study, go to courses, do what it took, get a mentor, get a coach, work with people, get into development groups, get into mastermind groups. 16-year-old Brad was willing to learn and grow. Now, 16-year-old Brad couldn't retire. He was correct. But 25-year-old Brad knew exactly what he was doing to be able to do that. Does that make sense for everybody? Your business right now might not be where you want it to be, but it can get there as long as you got it. Okay, let me check some of these. You got it. My goal every day. Yes, all in. Who used the actual word yes? Okay, you put it. All right, I get it. You added an exclamation point there. So it kind of doesn't count. But all right, get more creative with me today. So first rule today, I'm an Aussie. has to be fun. If it's not fun, we're not doing it. So you're willing to have fun? Say, yeah, give me a thumbs up. Give me a wave. Give me something to come crazy to get, tell me that you're willing to have fun on this thing. Second, I'm not going to give you the fish. I'm going to teach you how to fish for a lifetime so that you can do this forever. Third one, isn't that interesting? Get rid of those two first words. Teenage kids can use the words I know. Once you're an adult, you get rid of the words I know and you replace it with isn't that interesting. Because if you think you know it, that's when you get killed off in this thing. 
Number four, there's going to be some blinding flashes of the obvious today, meaning I'm going to remind you of a lot of things and I'm going to say some things that you go, dang, that's really obvious. Yes, that's the whole point. Simplicity is the point of what I'm trying to do here with you today. And number five, 100% participation. If you participate 100%, I'll give 100%. The more you participate, the more excited I get. And the more excited I get, the better stuff I teach. So would it be a good idea to get excited? Yes, it would. Thumbs up, raise the roof, all that sort of stuff. So where do we start this whole thing? Above and below this point. Above the point of power is three things. Ownership, accountable, and responsibility. We use that to teach you leadership. If you've never watched my leadership training, either jump on my YouTube channel or speak with your coach about our leadership and management training programs, okay? But those three things are what leadership is all about. Below that point is blame, excuse, and denial. Those negative behaviors are what management removes. If there is a lack of management, then there's going to be those behaviors. Or if there's bad management, there's going to be those behaviors. Management is two things, competency and productivity. Write that down. Management is competency and productivity. Leadership, two things, passion and focus. Write that down. And that's what we're doing. So today I'm asking that you're willing to play above that point. Are you willing to play in ownership, accountable and responsible so that you know if for your business to change, you got to change and grow? Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. It's a yes or a yes question. That's the only answer that we can get from it. So how did I get here? Well, I had to keep learning. These are all my mentors. If you go back, there's Jeffrey Gittimer, Phil Nosworthy, Scotty McCain, Mari Smith, Stedman Graham. Stedman, great on leadership. Better known, though, as Oprah's husband. It's kind of weird that he's better known for that. Uh, B&I, Ivan Meisner, we've become good buddies over the year. Michael Port, Marshall Goldsmith. Again, we've become great friends over the years. Keith Cunningham, the original Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, Dr. Kim, Aunt Lady Michelle Moan. Actually, that with Dr. Kim there, he was the CEO of the World Bank, and we were in they're coaching the uh, execs of the World Bank how to actually help with small businesses. Um, my BizX program, if you've been to BizX, wave at me, any of my BizX programs. We run them now in four locations around the world. But what I do with those BizXs is, yes, it's my company. I get to pay the best mentors in the world to come and teach me. And I bring all you guys along as well to hang out with me while we, while we do that. Um, my original mentor, Paul Dunn, who was just again with me uh, for our 30th birthday of the company in Thailand, uh, the 29th birthday of our company, one of my original mentors, Dame DC Cordova, uh, with me there in Thailand. Uh, the Sir Richard, I had to, uh, that was me coming off stage in Dublin and Sir Richard was going on after me. And of course, we're both dressed exactly the bloody same. His, he, he had a, more of a smoking jacket. And of course, he has better hair. There's no two ways about that. The man does have good hair. Uh, another one of my originals, Sir Les Brown. I don't call him, he's Sir to me, but he's not really. Um, oh, actually, that's me being interviewed by Grant, not, not me learning from Grant, but that's me teaching Grant about globalization of companies right there. So what's the challenge? The challenge is this, take a quick read. My challenge is to make sure that the 20,000 hours I have put into becoming an expert in the subject of creating business success, that I can get that to you in 90 minutes or less and you understand it, you can use it and you believe in it. Are you willing to go it at that pace? Yes, here's why it's actually going to work because I simplify everything. All of my 18 books, which by the way, if you've not bought all of my 18 books, get on my website right now, bradsugars.com or amazon.com, buy all 18 books and read the whole dang lot of them. My franchises, whether it's my commercial cleaning franchise, action coach, whatever it might be, everything is about simplification and creating models. One of my greatest mentors ever, I never got to meet him in person. He died in the early eighties. His name was uh, Dr. Buckminster Fuller, Richard Buckminster Fuller, Bucky, he was better known as. Bucky said, if you're going to if you're going to do something, create a model or an artifact, artifacts, books, models, all of the things I'm going to show you today are models that you can draw up on a piece of paper. If you can't explain it on a napkin, it's too complex. I break everything down to a single napkin and I want to teach it to you that way so you can learn it and do it. OK, learn it and do it is what we're going to do. So. The business coach system, again, happily and simply create a business that's growing, has a great team, provides real profits, has great customers, and basically it's running without you. How many of you be excited to have a business that makes you money whether you get out of bed or not? Say, yeah, that's the thing. That's where we're aiming for because this philosophy of mine, being in business should give you more life. Now, when you're placed in command, you got to take charge. Who said that? General Norman Schwarzkopf. Anyone remember this guy? Actually, when I first met him, he was in, he was in his uh, uniform. He's a scary looking dude in uniform. Then we had a cocktail later. It's like, he's not as scary when he's, in, when he's not in uniform. He's just a nice looking guy. But 
placed in command, take charge. So after today, I'm placing you in command of your business and you need to take charge of your business. Are we good with that? You're in command. You got to take charge, not just run it, not just work it, but take charge. There's a big difference between the two. I wrote this book once we'd coached 13 and a half thousand companies to success almost 20 years ago now. So 20 years in the making that book, I'm going to rewrite it next year so that on its 20th anniversary, it'll actually be fully reprinted and fully redone. This formula here that I'm about to teach you, the formula for success, took me 17 years to learn this formula, add to it, grow with it and understand it. But without it, it was hard work. Once I understood the formula for success, once I understood how to actually make dreams and goals a reality faster, it made me understand also what held people back or in particular for me, what held me back. So here's the formula, write it down. Let's break it down so that you understand how success actually happens and why this formula is so important. Dream, goal, learn, plan, act. Dreams times goals times learning times plans times actions equals success. Which one of these five do you think most people mess up the most? Have a guess. Which one? Type it in for me. Which one of these do you think most people either skip or just don't even do or not on the thing? It's interesting, Peter. And and uh, two, the first two said action. A bunch of you saying actions. Interestingly enough, people work dang hard. Okay, people work dang hard and get a great result with it. But here's where most people mess up. In fact, let me break it down for you. Dreams, W summer set more and set it best. Nothing if not at first a dream. You know, if you don't have a dream, then you're not going to achieve made amazing things. You know, just if you start thinking about people that shoot for average, see, um, where was it? It was in the military. They have a simple saying. And actually it was uh, the Navy SEALs. Two is one and one is none. Two is one and one is none. If you shoot for a goal of one and you get nothing and you miss the goal, you get zero. And so what we've got to do is shoot for much bigger goals. Even if coming to work with an action coach, even if all they do is help you dream bigger, then they've achieved their result. Because once you have bigger dreams, you set bigger goals. Now, without dreams, you don't set big goals. You just set average goals. Why? Because you go, okay, I want to be 10% better than last year. Why? Because that's what everyone else does. You know, that's the, the thing. Massive dreams lead to major goals. Now, dreams are 10 to 20 years out, okay? 10 to 20 years out. You don't know what those dreams, how they're going to happen. Someone said to me at a seminar, a live event a couple of years back, they said, Brad, I don't know how the dreams are going to happen, so I don't know if I want to write them down or not. I said, but that's the definition of a dream. If you knew how it was going to happen, it's not a dream. It's a to-do list item. So get the dreams, put them down on paper. If you don't have massive dreams, they're not going to happen. Now, inside five years is where we start setting goals. Actual numbers, actual, the SMART test, specific, measurable, uh, accountable, uh, sorry, achievable results oriented with a time frame. So you put the SMART test to actual goals. Now, what's the most important time frame goal? Have a guess. How often is the most important goal set? The daily goal. The daily goal is most important in the world. If you if you achieve all of your goals every day, do you achieve all of your goals every week? Yes, if you achieve every goals every week, then you achieve your quarterly goals and you achieve your annual goals. Daily goals are the most important goals that you can set in your life. If you don't do daily goals, start doing them tomorrow or today. In fact, start doing them today. Before you go to bed, write your goals for tomorrow. That's the way it is. Now, here's the skip. Here's the step that most people mess up. Remember, I asked you which of the five do most people mess up? It's actually this one, the learning. Once you set a new goal, guess what you've got to do? Devise a plan to learn how. The fact that, and remember, we said it at the start of today, you've got to grow into your goals. The fact that you wrote it as a goal means that you don't know how to achieve it. If you did know how to achieve it, you would have already achieved it. So when you write a goal, the next thing to do is to write the learning plan. See, um, on my podcast, if you ever jump on my podcast, either go to bradsugars.com or go to um, uh, my YouTube channel, The Big Success Podcast. There's one on there by uh, Professor Alan Pease. And he talks about how is the enemy of your goals. How is the enemy of your goals? Why does he say that? Because once you write a goal, what's the first thing you do? You start thinking, how do I do that? 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 And guess what? You don't know how to do it. Once you set a goal, the first thing you should be asking is, what do I need to learn 
to work out how to do that. What book should I read? What podcast should I be on? What Do you know what I mean? You've got to do the learning plan before you do the earning plan. So dream, goal, learn, then plan, then act. No use writing the plan if you don't do new learning. Because if you write a new plan based on no new learning, then your plan basically says, do the same stuff I used to do. So therefore, you get the same results you used to get. This is the formula for success. Dream, goal, learn, plan, act. Now, add to that this formula, B times do equals have. Decide what you want to have. Then you go back and work out what do I need to do. Then you go back and work out who do I need to become. Now, let me go back one slide. If you look at this, the dreams and goals is your what do I want to have. The learn, plan, act is what do I need to do. So from that, you need to then work out how do I build myself so that I get I build me and therefore it builds the other things. Work on you. Take that one step further. If somebody offers you an amazing opportunity, but you're not sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. But the learning has to happen. You can't achieve new things without new learning. By the way, that's uh, Richard's uh, in 2014, he quoted me on his blog and I showed it to him on the night we met in Dublin in 2017. And he's like, huh, yeah, that's a crazy quote. Anyway, it's it's where I said entrepreneurs are the crazy people who work 100 hours a week so they don't have to work 40 hours a week for someone else. Very true, isn't it? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's get the other way. Okay, so the recipe for business for success. Um, you keep hearing this whole thing of work harder, not smarter, and, and you've actually got to do both. You need a systemic methodology to grow a business. Now, what is a business? Here's my definition of it. A commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. If you have to go in there, it's not a business, it's a job, and you work for the biggest moron in the room, okay? No more complex than that. Become a better business owner, not better at the job of your business. And that's what the Action Coach system is. It's about teaching you how to become a great owner, not teaching you how to be better at the job of the business. So we break that down into six steps, okay? So let me break it through the six steps and then we're gonna work it through each of them as we go through. So mastery, there are four areas of mastery that we're gonna teach you. Mastery is the basic building block, the fundamental of getting the business right. If we get mastery right, we've got stability. Then we get to work on marketing. There are five ways to do marketing. Remember I told you there's models for everything. Four areas of mastery, five ways of marketing. Everything you're going to see is a model that you can learn, study, and understand. Once you've got marketing right, you've got great cash. Then you can afford to put in great systems. The systems, there is nine steps to systemization. That is the system that we will go through with you. Once you've got systems in place, you've now got time back. So you now need to build a team. There are six keys to a winning team. I'm going to share all of these things here with you today so you understand the system. From the team, we then go to scale. See, once you've got that four basic building blocks, mastery, marketing, systems, team, then we can scale the business, okay? Scale, there are five core disciplines of scale. Each of these, by the way, I have books on these. You go and work with a coach. They take you through the process of each of these. They can do training with you on each of these areas. But once you've got the team in place, the business is run under management, you can then go into the five disciplines of scale. Once you've done that, you've got freedom and you value the business and you decide to sell it or keep it. That, my friends, is how we get massive results in business. Everyone with me so far? Six steps. Let's break them down, work through them one area at a time. So mastery, I told you there's four areas of mastery. Now, when you first come and work with a coach, they might need to take you through our 12-week action club, which is an education program, teaching you what these things are and how to do them in your business. So number one area of mastery is destination mastery. Why? We need clarity on where we're going. How do we do that? We get planning in place, goal setting in place, all of the different aspects that make sure these things work for you. Second area of mastery is time mastery. Again, it's, it's not about time management. It's about self-management, self-management for you, self-management for your team. So we get higher levels of productivity. Why is productivity important, gang? What is productivity equals? Productivity equals profitability. Okay. Number three area is delivery mastery. And again, we're looking for consistency here. It's about building processes into the organization so that we get consistency of delivery of our product or service. Number four area is financial mastery. Why? Because we want profitability. No more complex than that. Knowing your numbers is vital to get profitability in the organization. And I want to be very clear on something. When you are at the mastery level, 
Growth is not something you want to chase real hard. You got to be patient for growth, but impatient for profits. When you're at the mastery level, you got to be profitable before you start adding more business. If you start adding more business and you're, and you're not profitable, you just start losing more money. So we got to make certain that that's what's happening at that level. Now, mastery level will feel like you're not getting anywhere. Anyone recognize this guy? Uh, actually, I had dinner with him the night before we went up on the plane. This is a zero gravity plane. They do this parabolas sort of thing. And so Buzz Aldrin, and by the way, he at one point he's throwing me M&Ms. And it's like I'm floating through the air catching these things. But as he said here, and he talked about it at, at dinner, that they were never actually on track more than, and I forget the exact number he said, but it was like three or 4% of the time. You've got to make sure that you're, you're zigging and zagging and getting towards it but never perfectly sort of thing. Does that make sense for everybody? It's, I can't say it better than he does. So second area, marketing. Let me give you my definition of marketing so that you understand what I mean by it, okay? By the way, uh, if you miss any of this, there'll be a recording. We'll put it on our YouTube channel. So make sure if you haven't already, in fact, Gona, could you or Sarah, could someone put up a link to the Action Coach YouTube channel on here so people can follow that? Just when you get it, just hit subscribe, okay? And hit the alarm bell so that every time we put up a new video, you're getting that and getting it uh, on there. So yeah, please put that link up, gang. So profitably buying lifetime customers. What does that mean? Well, buying customers, if you haven't read my book called Buying Customers, make sure you do that. But lifetime customers means not just a singular transaction. We get them back forever. And profitably buying them means if I put, say, $1,000 into marketing, I get 10,000 back. If I put 100 into marketing, I get 200 back. Profitably buying customers. We've got to make sure we get a return. Thus, marketing is math, so we measure and test. We measure everything in marketing. The analytics of your marketing is vital these days. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. YouTube channel. Excellent. Excellent. Action Coach TV is what it's called. So what do we want to do with our marketing? We want to make sure that we have a niche. We don't want to be competing on price. The worst thing you can do in business is compete on price. Live by price, die by price. And people go, oh, but Brad, what about uh, Costco? It's a price. No, it's not. Costco is a membership business. They make all of their profit on their membership fees. Look at Amazon. What's Where is Amazon's profit? Amazon Prime, the membership fees, their membership-based organizations that are trying to do it. Different business model than what most people think they are. OK, now to get no price competition, we got to be unique. we got to be different. And that's one of the segments of working with your coach, working out how you can get out of price competition, working out how you can be fo focused on making profitability, not just sales. Possibly it could be a guarantee in business. By law, you have to guarantee what you sell anyway. So why not turn it into a marketing initiative and actually get more business from it? So discounting. Let me show you what happens if you discount. If let's say in this particular chart up here, you say you've got a margin of 40% and uh, you reduce the prices by 10%, you have to sell 33% more to make the same profit. You have to get one third more customers to make the same profit. It is discounting is dumb. It really is in business. In fact, if you go the other way and say, okay, let's increase our prices. If your price, if your margin's at 35% and you add 8% to it, you can lose one fifth. You can lose one in five customers for an 8% price rise. Do you think an 8% price rise is going to lose you 20% of your customer base? No way. But that's what happens out there in the world of business. You've got to do the numbers to do that. Now, this formula, if you write down nothing today other than this formula, you are on track. This is the most important formula of the day. So write it down. This is called my five ways to multiply your profits. Okay. Now, why have I got three of them in red, by the way? Customers, revenues, and profits. Because that's what I get asked for most often. People say, oh, we need more customers. Oh, we need more revenues or sales. Oh, we need more profitability. That's not the way it works, gang. That is not the way it works. So let's do a little business here. I'm going to give you an example of a little business. This little business here are its numbers. If you haven't written them down, start writing down their numbers and make sure you understand them. So in this little business, they had 4,000 leads last year, 4,000 prospects, potential customers. And uh, they came in on all different marketing methods, whatever it is. This is just an example, little business. Let's say we sold to 25% of them. So one in four made a purchase. So we've got how many customers? 1,000 customers. Everyone sticking with me? 1,000 customers times two transactions. In other words, some bought once, never came back. Others bought 10 times during the year type thing. But the average customer made two transactions. 
on average, they spent $100 while they were there. Uh, if you're watching from Europe, yes, euros or pounds or wherever you're from, change the dollar sign to whatever it is for you, okay? So that gives us 200,000 in take home in, in total revenue for this business. A thousand customers with two transactions, 2000 transactions times hundred equals 200,000. Nice little tiny business. We're gonna give them 25% margins just to make it easy on the math. So that gives this business 50 grand in take home money. So when we get to the marketing phase of helping you grow your business, how many areas are we gonna be working on? Gang, this is not a trick question. How many areas are we gonna be working on? Five, right? What are the five areas? Leads, conversion, transactions, average sale, and margins. Are we going to measure them? Yes or no? Marketing is math, so we need to measure. We're going to measure them. Then we're going to put strategies in place to fix all of them. Now, what if I told you that in lead generation, there's more than 80 strategies to generate leads. Average business users, how many would you guess? How many strategies do you think the average business would use to generate new business? I'm seeing threes, twos, ones, two is the number. The average business has two strategies for lead generation. You want a growth business, you need at least seven strategies for new lead generation, okay? Now, if we go into this little business and we're gonna work on these things, by the way, conversion rate, there's more than 83, there's 83 strategies to improve your conversion rate. Number of transactions, 78 strategies to improve transaction rate. There's 59 strategies for average sale and 56 strategies for margins. Imagine we could teach all of those strategies to you in the next 12 months. What might happen to your marketing if we were to teach that? Now, you probably only pick three or four in each of the five areas to work on in 12 months, but imagine what would happen to your numbers in each area. Now, I'm going to give you a very simple example today. I'm going to say all we aim for in the first 12 months is 10% better. We're not going to try and do anything magic in the first 12 months, okay? Even in the first 12 weeks to six months, Let's aim for 10% better in each of the five areas. Can, is that okay with everyone? We do a tiny number, not trying to do anything crazy, anything massive. Let's just start with simple. So 4,000, what's it become? 4,400. This makes sense for everyone? So over 12 months, we learn the 87 strategies. Your coach works with you. We refine. In fact, to get 10% better, guess what we have to do? There's only two things we have to do to get 10% better in all five of these areas. What do you think the two things are? Number one, we have to measure it. Often, once we measure it, we'll actually get 10% better. Just by focusing on it, we can get 10% better. Number two, fix what you're already doing. We don't have to do more marketing. We just have to fix your current website. We don't have to do more social media. We just have to fix your social media. Does that make sense for everybody? It's tiny little changes like that that will massively improve your number of leads. But we're going for 10%. Then we go to conversion rate, okay? So conversion rate, again, measure it, fix what you're currently doing, 10% improvement. We don't even have to add more strategies. We just have to measure and fix. Measure and fix. So, of course, we've got 10% more customers, don't we? No, we don't. Why? It's, it's multiplied here. This is called leverage. 10% by 10% means we've got 21% more customers, 1,210. Then we're going to work on your repeat business. Again, measure it, fix it. Like, just... I was with a company the other day and I asked them one simple question about their repeat business. I said, tell me, actually it was a two part question. I said, tell me, do you collect the names, emails, phone numbers and addresses of the people you do business with? And they said, oh yeah, sometimes. So do we need to fix that? Yes or no? Yes, we need to fix that. You don't just get them sometimes, you get them all the time. And number two, I asked them, when someone buys from you, do you send them a little note that says thanks? They said, no. If we just fix those two things, do you think we can get 10% more transactions out of their existing customer base? Of course, there's always one that's, uh, I had uh, a, a business in the UK and they were just actually out here at my $100 million strategy week and they're in the funeral business. And of course, everyone goes, oh yeah, see Brad, you can't get repeat business in the funeral business. Not true. Who's the customer? Not the dead person. The family is the customer. Some of them are going to die at some point. Keep in touch. Get them coming back. Two becomes 2.2, Yes. 2.2. Then we work on average dollar sale. You know, average sale is so easy to get increased. Number one, measure. Number two, fix. Number three, do you want to increase your average sale by 10% starting tomorrow? Great. Simple. Add a 10% price rise tomorrow. Everyone on here tomorrow, increase your prices by 10%. 99% of people will never even notice. The only person that will notice you increase your prices by 10% is your accountant because they will be ecstatic about the fact that you actually have real profitability. No more complex than that. Average sale goes to 110, measure it, fix, increase, whichever. So of course we've increased revenues by 10%, haven't we? 
Are you nodding or shaking your head? Which one? No, we haven't increased it by 10%. We've increased it by 46%. It's 292,820. This is the most important formula you'll ever use. Do you need to know your five numbers? Yes, you need to know your leads, your conversion rate, your transactions, your average sale, and your margins. Do you need to put a plan together to grow all five areas? Yes or no? Do you need a marketing plan on how to grow my leads, how to grow? Yes, you need that plan. Get with your coach, learn how to do that sort of stuff. Now, where are my accountants? I'm trained as an accountant. I qualified at university as accountant. Any other accountants on here? Wave at me. Uh, there's a couple of you. Thanks for admitting to it on a webinar. Appreciate that. If your sales are up 46%, are your profits generally gone up as a percentage? Yes or no? Yes, your overheads didn't double overnight sort of thing. But in this case, let's pretend we had to use some of the 50 odd strategies, 27 and a half, 10 percent better. That gives us eighty thousand five hundred and twenty five dollars and fifty cents. That's a 61 percent increase in the bottom line. Give me a yes if you'd enjoy a 61 percent increase in your bottom line in the next 12 months. Don't use the word yes, though. Give me a yes. Type it in. Give it to me. How are you going to do it? What's your word? Try and use something different from last time. Steal some of the other people's words. That's a good way to do it. Absolutely. So just for fun, imagine you could double these numbers, right? Imagine you could double them over a year, two years, three years, five years. Imagine it took you five years to double the numbers in your business. So 4,000, what is it? 8,000, 25, 50. 1,000 is no long. It's not 2,000, is it, when we're doubling? It's 4,000, right? You get the power of this whole thing. So two becomes four, 100 becomes 200. What's the total revenue of this business? If you already know it, if you've seen me do this before, don't type it in. If you don't know it, have a guess. What's 200 grand when we're doubling? It's not 400, is it? Not 800, not 1.6. It comes in at 3.2. That's just the power of the formula. I want you to understand. Now, you might do 10% in one area, 20 in another, 15 in another, 30 in another. Does it make sense? You'll do different percentages in each one. But over 12 months of learning this with your coach, imagine the difference to your bottom line. That's what you've got to focus in on. Final point of marketing is the customer experience, right? We've got to get the customer experience right. When they're in the target audience, they're a suspect. We turn a suspect into a prospect by getting them to raise their hand. Um, where is that? That's my latest new book, Raise Your Hand Marketing. If you haven't read it, jump on Amazon, order it away, jump on my website, jump on anywhere, talk to your coach, read the book. Um, prospect becomes a shopper with their first transaction. Second transaction, they become a customer. They're not a customer at shopper, right? Why? They're not accustomed to doing business with you. A customer is someone that's accustomed to buying from you. They've done multiple transactions. From there, we get them to feel like they belong. They become a member, okay? You remember, some of you are old enough to remember Cheers, where everybody knows your name. That's the whole idea of it. From a member, they start giving us referrals, at referrals, they become an advocate. Once they start posting about us on social media, they become a raving fan. And we love raving fans because they make more sales for us than anyone else. Is a raving fan customer or an advocate customer worth more to you than every other customer? Yes or no? Yes, you need to know them by name. You need to have a plan for them. You need to handle it. You need to work with them and work with them well. So, it's not knowing what to do. It's doing what you know. If you talk about it, it's a dream. If you envision it, it's possible. If you schedule it, it's real. And yes, that is, yes, I, I'm six foot four and I look tiny next to Tony Robbins. Correct. That is the case. That's us in Namali, Fiji at his resort uh, back many, many moons ago when we were hanging out down there uh, in, in the local village. Anyway, Mastery, marketing, let's get into systems, okay? What systems stand for? Save yourself time, energy, and money. Here's the way business works. You build the systems, right? That's your job, the owner, the CEO, your job, build the systems. The systems run the business, the team run the systems, and you lead the team. If you lead a team that's running systems, then the systems run the business, and the, uh, the but you've got to build the systems. It's a circle, okay? You've got to build the systems so that that works. Now, our nine steps to systemization, you can read this in my book, instant systems, or you can work with a coach. They'll take you through the systemization system. Yes, it's a systemization system. That's kind of a hard thing to say, but you can get it around it eventually. Nine steps to systemization. It starts out with these four majors, okay? The vision, the mission, the culture and values. If you haven't, uh, if you want an example of that, jump on actioncoach.com team. Every time I mention a link, if someone can just put it up there, please. Jump on actioncoach.com, take a look at our vision, our mission statement, our culture uh, and values document. From there, you build the goals. There's no use building systems if you don't know where you're going. 
you've got to know the vision, you've got to know the mission, you've got to know where you're going in order to build the system. So the goals then become an org chart. Once we know the goals, we can work out who do we need. In order to get to the goal, what sort of team do we need? We need these people, okay? Once you go from the goal, then you can go to position contracts, okay? So the org chart becomes position contracts, which tells people what their job is. From position contracts, you can work out key performance measures. I like to use the word goals internally as well as for the major organization, but you can use key performance measures. I think people understand that more. Finally, at point eight, do we start creating manuals and videos, training people how to do things? And then at point nine, we create checklists, so that we can actually do it. See, why are checklists the most important system? Well, let me give you a simple example. If you get on an airplane tomorrow, do you want your pilot to follow the checklist? Yes or no? Of course you want your pilot to follow the checklist. In fact, here's a question for you, not a trick question. What percentage of the time would you like the pilot to follow the checklist? 100%, yes? Why do you want them to follow 100% of the time? See, when people in business say to me, Brad, oh, look, my people are just not achieving. They, they, they're not doing a lot. Well. Show me the checklist they're following. And they go, well, they don't have a checklist. Well, that's why you're getting the results you're getting. If people had a checklist, you'd get better results, but there's no checklist. So of course you're getting inconsistencies. Speaking of great people, Mikhail Gorbachev, one of the best leaders of our generation, definitely out there in the marketplace. Um, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. If what you have done yesterday still looks big to you, you haven't done much today. That second one hurts, doesn't it? If what you're doing, if, if that looks big, you haven't done much today. So hopefully the rear view mirror does not look as big as what it says. Anyway, from systems, we move to team. Now, by the way, you recognize that within the Action Coach system, we teach you all of this, okay? We teach you implement, teach, implement, teach, implement. It's some people it takes 12 weeks, some people it takes 12 years, okay? Some of you have got to dig your way out of a dang hole to get into the positives, but otherwise, so... Team, how does it work? You as the owner or the CEO have to build your team. The way you take care of your team is how your team takes care of your customers, how your customers takes care of the business and how the business takes care of you. If you take care of the team really, really well, they take care of the customers. So you build that team, you give them training systems, you, you know, all of the things you do to build your people. As you build your people, they take better care of your customers. They build the customers. They build the customer base, the customer numbers, the repeat business rates. As you take care of the customers, the customers take care of the business, business takes care of you. So these are our six keys to a winning team. Number one, strength of leadership. Would it be important if you're a business owner to do leadership training? Yes, speak with your coach. Not only that, you've got to have a common goal. You've got to know where the business is going. And by the way, a financial goal is not a common goal. If you say to your team, hey, our goal is to make 12 million this year, your team doesn't go home going, you know what? I'm so excited. I get to make my boss $12 million this year. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? No, none of them care about you getting a new yacht. All right, none of them. They care about common goals, what's common, what's good for all of us. Number three, the rules of the game. Number four, build the action plan. Number five and six are more esoteric. This is where you've got to support the risk taking. If you're doing new things, will people make mistakes? Yes, so you need to support those risk takers, all right? But making a mistake one time is okay. Making a mistake two times is a choice. So let's make sure that we're supporting risk taking, not stupidity, all right? That's an important aspect behind it. And finally, 100% uh, inclusion and involvement. Your job is to get everybody on the team participating. Your job is to get everybody on the team involved in what's going on. Championship teams add a couple of things. Number one, they train all the time. Championship teams never stop training and they come together with a massive amount of communication. And write this down, true communication is the response you get. I hope you're all excited. By the way, uh, Gona, I know some people have arrived late. So if you can put that uh, link to the questionnaire in, I know you may not get time to fill in the questionnaire while you're here with me. Majority of you filled in the questionnaire before coming on today, which is fantastic. If you don't get time to do it, uh, well, put it real simple. I'm going real fast. You probably only got time to take notes from me, but click that link so it's open on your page so you can fill in the questionnaire. Because at the end of today, I'm going to make you a deal. And in that deal, if you've filled in the questionnaire, you get the best deal there is. If you haven't filled in the questionnaire, you don't get the best deal there is. Simple, simple thing. So fill in the questionnaire. Um, any NBA, any basketball fans here on today? The, the glove, Gary Payton. His son is actually crushing it now in the NBA. You make sacrifices. You sacrifice yourself. 
Do you want to possibly win a championship or do you want to be the same person you were when you were 20 and get those same numbers? Takes sacrifice to do this stuff. Takes a lot of learning and a lot of growth. What's the hardest work? Not the doing work. The hardest work is the learning and growing work. The learning and growing is harder than the doing. So we go from team to scale, okay? Scale is where we talk about the five disciplines. So year-on-year -year sustainable growth, exponential growth. Instead of doing a business that's growing by percentages, we're now going to a business that's growing by multiples, okay? So we don't. this is where once we've got the four in place, we start looking for multiples growth, not just uh, percentage-based growth. So here are the five disciplines. Number one, strategy, which, by the way, are all in this book here. If you haven't got it, jump on Amazon. Pulling profits out of a hat, read the books. You got to do the reading and the learning. Number one strategy, which is a combination of five things, your business model, leverage, scalability, opportunity, and marketability. Read about that or go and talk with your coach about that. Number two, the people, leadership, recruitment, induction, training, and retention. These are the things. You build the people, they build the company. Number three, execution, management, planning, measurement, and systems, okay? Make sure that you're doing all of the things you need to do to get the level of growth that you need to get. Number four on the list, biz dev, marketing, sales, customer experience. Number five, mission, which is about your purpose. See, the word love if people don't love buying from you, don't expect to be great business. You can't be a scaled business if people don't love working for you, if people don't love being a customer of yours. And of course, mission, a lot of that is social responsibility. What are you doing out there in the world, not just what are you doing for yourself? Um, Lord Sugar, by the way, uh, for any of you that haven't met uh, him, uh, he is the apprentice, uh, runs the Apprentice TV show in the UK, multi-billionaire. Uh, he did joke when I was doing this interview with him. He said, did you just change your name to get the interview with me? I was like, I thought I was famous until I sat with Lord Sugar. I said to him at the end, by the way, do you think that we're related? He said, I've only known you an hour and I know we're definitely not related. <laughs> Thanks, Lord Sugar. If, if you, the guy is as straight as a nail when it comes to, to things. He, was, he actually got his COVID shot the day before. So I think it was just because he was grumpy. But uh, his wife tells me, no, he's always that grumpy. But the entrepreneurial instinct is in you. You can't learn it. You can't buy it. You can't put it in a bottle. It just comes. It's just there and it comes out. Every one of you on here today has that entrepreneurial spirit. But the spirit isn't enough. The entrepreneurial spirit isn't enough. If it was enough, everyone that started their own business would succeed. If you want to bake a great cake, do you need a recipe and, and training? Yes. If you want to build a great business, you need the recipe. That's what the Action Coach system is all about. So finally, we hit the level of freedom, okay, where the business works without you. Well, what does that mean? You get to do one of two things. You either sell the business or three things. You can sell the business. Well, I guess two. Sell it or let it run without you, okay? Okay. One of the first things you'll do when you meet your coach is you'll actually set a date by which you want your business finished, meaning when will the business run without you? By what date will that be? Okay, that's what we've got to build towards. From there, you can learn investing. If you come and join us at Action Coach, we'll also teach you investing. I run training courses all year, uh, and some of those are on buying companies. Some of them are on buying real estate. Some of them are on uh, living your life on purpose, all of these things. If you join our membership, this is a part of what you get in your membership program. So chat with your coach about joining the membership program uh, and becoming a member of Action Coach. Finally, uh, once the business runs without you, you're going to have to get some hobbies, okay? And I know some people are like, but my business is my hobby. Yes, eventually you might want to have a hobby other than your business, okay? So uh, learning... Now, this is Sharon Lecter, by the way. Sharon was the uh, person who actually wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Robert. She's written all of these other books. She's actually the number one best-selling uh, nonfiction author on the planet. Her books have sold more than anybody else. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, after the Bible, is the number one seller. It's insane how well she's done. That's her and her husband, Michael. They were with me at the football in, in Arizona. Um Money is a life skill, and as parents, grandparents, and interested adults, it's up to us to make sure our children are prepared for the financial world they're going to face. Here's the problem with that. If you don't know it, how do you teach it to your kids? Same with business. If you don't know business, how do you teach it to your staff? We've got to learn. We've got to grow. We've got to keep doing that stuff. 
Entrepreneurial Growth Ladder. Okay, so Sharon talked about how you've got to grow, right? So let's take a look at what it is that you need to do. Business has those six steps. We followed that, right? We've got the six steps notice for the business. This is you, you personally. How do you need to grow is what we want to focus in on. So um, I call this the entrepreneurial ladder. Okay, and we all have to understand what we said at the start today. If you keep growing, then the business can keep growing. The more you learn, the more you can earn, right? That's your responsibility is to learn so that you can earn more, okay? Now, it starts out at level minus one. At level minus one, you're the student, okay? What does that mean? Well, as a student, you cost money. Whether you cost your parents money or society money, kids cost money, all right? That's the way it is. But what is your job as a student? Your job is to be an apprentice employee. So you're learning how to get a job. You're learning how to be an employee, right? Once you're at employee level, what's your job? You're an apprentice business owner. So at employee level, you do a bunch of different jobs to learn how to start your own business. Now, if you only ever did one job, like if you're an engineer for 20 years and then you went into business for yourself and you say, but I've got 20 years experience. And I would say, no, you don't. You've got one year's experience. You just did it 20 times in a row. Okay, so you want experience in different areas because once you get to self-employed level one, and by the way, this is in, I think, oh no, I do have a copy here. Normally I end up giving away my books. This is in this book here, Billionaire in Training. Um, at self-employed, you're on like the seesaw, right? Find the work, do the work. Anyone remember this level of business? Anyone remember it? Like where you had to, it's just you, you're by yourself and you make a sale, you do the work, make the sale, do the work. It's a total seesaw. You're running back and forth. You're wearing all the hats, all that sort of stuff. Well, it's self-employed. You got to learn a lot. You got to learn sales, marketing. You got to learn purchasing. You got to learn leasing. You got to learn all of these different things. If you learn them working for someone else, that's great. If you have to learn them in your own business, then it's going to cost you time and money. Okay, get paid to learn. Don't just learn it on your own. Eventually, you move up to manager. You start to employ people. It was self-employed is a seesaw. Managers a merry-go-round. You're running round and round in circles, putting out fires. Your staff start. You think they work for you, but the reality is in the beginning, you work for them. Why? Because you're learning. You don't know how to be a great manager or leader or systems or business planning. You got to learn all those things. And people say, yeah, but I worked for someone else and I learned it over there. There's a difference. The emotional level of learning it when you work for someone else. I was chatting with a coach the other day, one of the coaches at Action Coach, and uh, he was a, a CMO of a very large organization. And I said, what was your annual budget? He said, our annual budget of marketing is about $50 million a year. I said, how much emotion was there in you to spend that $50 million a year? He said, Brad, I could spend that. I could just cut a check. I just write it and sign it. It's not my money. Now he's in his own business. He's looking at running a $500 ad and he's panicked. Why? There's an emotional difference when it's your business than when it's someone else's business. Okay, very big difference. So from manager, we learn to become an owner. These are all your learning levels. Does this make sense to everyone? You've got to go through these learning phases. Whilst you're growing the business, you're growing yourself. Once you become an owner, it runs without you. Then you need to learn to invest the money. Once you're an investor, you then become an entrepreneur and you actually at investor, you're investing your money. At entrepreneur, you're having other people invest in you with their money. Does that make sense for everybody? Okay, good. If you've got any questions, type them in the chat window at any point in time. The team will highlight them for me and make me come back to them later on. So if you do have any questions, I will leave time for that later on. So when we talk about management, remember I said management's competency and productivity. That's those first few layers, okay? Learning management. From here, we learn leadership about passion and focus. And so we have to help you learn management. We have a 12-week management training. If you ever need it, talk to your coach. In fact, if you want to bring your people through it, they can come through the 12-week management training as well. Oftentimes, we'll go into companies and run that training in the company so that everyone gets it and everyone understands it. So how does that look? What's your coaching journey look like? Well, if you look at the access up the side, it's from going from employee to entrepreneur. If you look at across the bottom, it's the six steps for your business, the mastery, marketing systems, team scale, and freedom. We would love to think that your journey is a beautiful, nice arc like this. Is it ever going to be a beautiful arc like this? No. What did uh, Buzz Aldrin show us? The, arc, the chart will actually look more like this, a bit up, a bit down, a bit up, a bit down, a bit up, a bit down type thing. But eventually, you hit this point where you've built a business that works without you. Your day-to-day -day is freed up, and now you can go to work on the business, not in the business. Now you can work on scale and on massive growth, 
and do all of those things that are here. See, if you look at it, once you've built the team, you've got it to this level, you're an owner, team, commercial problem, enterprise, then the thing happens. But I want to add this in one other formula. Remember the be, do, have formula. Does anyone remember that from the start of the session? So what you need to be on this axis is who you need to become. Across the bottom is what you need to do. The chart shows you what you get to have. Up and down is where everybody is, Jackie. That's the way of the world. We keep going with this thing, but it keeps moving in the right direction. And that's what it is. So here's the thing about committing to yourself, okay? You have your dreams and goals. You've got to commit to those things. How many times do you think we hear the saying, well, you know, next time I'll, I'll do that. Next time I'll read that. Next time I'll do that. No, if I've mentioned a book today and you haven't read it, you need to get on Amazon, buy that book and read that book. If I've mentioned a podcast to listen to, you need to do it. Don't just think about it. Do it. Commit to your learning. See, here's the thing. If you can learn it, you can do it. A uh, friend of my Franny Drescher, I'm not sure if you guys remember Franny from the TV show, The Nanny. I was on the board with Fran of her charity, Cancerous Man, so her best friend, Susan, on the, on the other side there. If we don't empower ourselves with knowledge, then we're going to be led down a garden path. My whole life has been about changing negatives into positives. I got famous, then I got cancer, and now I love to talk about it. Sometimes the best gifts come in the ugliest packages. Sometimes we have problems in our business, and we're going to learn to get through it. Sometimes you just got to grow and do that. So how do we get there? Let me give you some of the philosophies that you need to understand. 21 years of age, I learned this uh, philosophy and I was taught it mathematically, divide to multiply. And it made sense to me. And then someone said, yeah, think of it as ever more with ever less. And again, it made sense to me, but I didn't know how to apply it. So I'm going to show you how I applied it. Okay. Because once you apply it, it changes everything. Once you apply this formula and this philosophy, it changes the way the world works. Philosophy is leverage. Everyone say it out loud so your brain remembers it. Leverage. That's the thing. This is my definition of it. Do the work once, get paid forever. See, uh, it's not a trick question. How many times did I write this book? Once. How long will I get paid for it? Forever. Okay. I, I build a business once. I build a business that works without me. I build it once. It pays me back for ever. Okay. And if you think of it from, think of it this way. If you're employees work, managers work, owners work. Owners work, do the work once, get paid forever. Managers work, do the work once, get paid long term. Employees work, do the work once, get paid once. A friend of, uh, friend of a friend came to me saying, listen, Brad, can I get your advice? And she was a hairdresser. And she said, it doesn't seem fair to me. I said, what do you mean it doesn't seem fair? She said, well, in my business, I'm the owner, and yet some weeks my staff take home more money than I do. I said, uh huh? She said, well, it just I don't understand why. And I said, well, tell me, what do your staff do all day every day? And she said, well, they cut hair. I said, what do you do all day every day? She said, well, I cut hair. I said, so you do an employee work and expecting owner's money, it doesn't work. You can't do employee work and expect owner's money. Okay, you want owner's money, do owner's work. You want manager's money, do manager's work. Do the work once, get paid forever. So how fast can you learn this system? Number one, get control, mastery. Number two, get profitable, marketing. Number three, get off the tools, systems. Number four, build the, finish the business, build a team that works in there and does that. If you take a year or two of learning right now, can you commit yourself to that year or two of learning and therefore have the rest of your life of having a business that works without you, should you so choose? That's all we're asking you to think about. Two years, one year, learning, apply. It might take a little longer to apply it, but it won't take much longer than that to, to learn it. Education, the single most powerful tool to help people pull themselves out of poverty and change their life trajectory. So when are you going to succeed? There's three levels of goals that we set out there in life. Number one is an away goal. Number two is a towards goal. Number three is a legacy goal. The away goal is like the negative. I don't want to work too many hours. I don't want to be overweight. I don't want to be broke. How many of you know people that set goals like that? Their goal is a negative. Their goal is to get away from a negative. That only lasts until the pain subsides, until, oh, look, I don't want to be in pain. And once the pain stops, they don't go and get fit. They don't go and get healthy. The towards goal. Luckily enough, age 16, I met Mr. Jim Rohn. Um, age 13, I learned how to set an away goal. Age 13, my family moved. Actually, I'm going to age myself right here. My family, we moved from Darwin in Australia to Adelaide in Australia. In Darwin, you wore shorts and a T-shirt to school because it was a tropical climate all year round. Hot, hot, hot. 
Move to Adelaide, freezing cold. Uh, long pants, blazers, the whole thing, right? Well, the cool thing at the time, and let's see how old I am. The cool thing at the time was Levi's 501 jeans. Anyone remember that? If you remember Levi's 501s being cool, you and I are in the same bracket, right? Well, my mom didn't believe in Levi's 501s. She believed in what we could afford. And what we could afford was corduroy jeans from Kmart. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever worn corduroy pants, they are the dumbest thing ever in the history of pants, right? Because as you walk, your legs rub together and you make like a, a farting sound type thing. I'm 13 years of age, the new kid in school. I'm the tall, lanky kid. And I'm my pants make a noise every time I walk. It's like, you know, I'm trying to walk like a cowboy to keep my legs apart so I don't sound like... A, anyway, some kid teases me about it. I've got two brothers, so I knew how to fight. So I got some kid teasing me. I end up snotting the kid, beating the daylights out of him, get taken to the principal's office. Principal calls my mom. Both of them are yelling at me. I drive home with mom. She's yelling at me on the way home. When we get home, she says, go to your room, wait till your father gets home, which I know means I'm in deep, deep doo-doo. So in the time that I'm waiting for dad, I go out and I find mom's shears in her sewing kit and I come in and I cut those pants into ribbons. And I'm like, because I blamed the pants, right? It couldn't have been my fault. It was the pants. Well, I vowed and declared that day to myself that I would never, ever, ever not have enough money to have whatever I wanted. I went to work the next day doing jobs for people, trying to find a way. Rodney Hogg, a famous cricketer, lived across the street. I did odd jobs for him, but I always had it. And that when I met Mr. Roan at age 16, and because um, that was 13, I set the away goal. 16, Mr. Roan taught me about uh, positive goals and about towards goals. And that's when I set the goal of retiring at age 25. I had no idea how I was going to do it. I was 16, you know, but I knew if I set the goal, Mr. Roan taught me many things, but he got me there. But finally, I learned once I had all the things, once I got a private jet and I was just like, yeah, I want a bigger jet. Once I got a boat, it was like, I want a bigger boat. And, and all of these things, that doesn't make you any happier. What makes you happier is being more fulfilled. That's why my podcast is the Big Success Podcast, because it's all about success and what does it mean to you? And success means so many different things. I inter Today, I interviewed a crime detective, a, a, a homicide detective about success. Such a different philosophy. That one you'll learn from. And in fact, his sales ability, he said, you know what? I sell life sentences. So like, damn, dude, I want to learn how you sell because like, there's so many great things he taught us. But anyway, leaving a legacy is not enough. I want to state this to you. My mentor, Paul Dunn, taught me, Brad, you don't want to leave a legacy. You want to live your legacy. And so that's why I'm here with you today to live my legacy, to help you grow. So why you're here, why you want to be successful, that's what's the most important thing. And it might be your family. It might be to prove to someone. It might be just because, Brad, I don't have any other choice. If I don't succeed, I can't pay the bills. What matters is not whether it's in a way or a towards or a legacy right now. What matters is that you know deep down in your heart, I'm going to succeed. I know I'm going to succeed. This is how I'm going to do it. And thank God I found Action Coach because you guys are going to be the way to help me get there. If you commit, we'll commit to you. So why now? Why is it so important to do this right now? Number one, the market is shifting so dramatically right now globally that we keep seeing things with interest rates, with inflation. All of these things means that if you don't get control right now, you're going to get swallowed up by a lot of this stuff. The opportunities that are coming our way, especially because of the boomer economy, Boomers are shutting down businesses and selling businesses right now at a record rate. There have never been more boomers trying to sell their business than there are today. And that brings a massive level of opportunity in any business. And number three, the globalization factor. The COVID pandemic increased. Amazon said they, in the first year of COVID, they jumped seven years on their predictive numbers of what they were going to do. So we virtualized the world seven years faster just in that first year. Overall, we virtualized the world about 10 years faster in two years. So much different in the way that we work today. So how do we get there? There's four things. Number one, you got to get part of a community. Number two, you got to get some accountability. Number three, if you want, you got to measure the results. And number four, you got to get the education. 
This care philosophy is what we do at Action Coach. We build a community that we introduce you to, and we have you and other business people work together to help each other and help grow. I hope that you are smart enough to know that the more people you share what I've done today, when you get the recording of this, I want you to share it with every business owner you know. The more business owners you share this with, the more we help each other, the easier this gets. Business owners need to help each other. There's no two ways about it. You need to help your fellow business brethren. Accountability. If you do not have accountability, do not expect higher results. And people go, I keep myself accountable. Not possible. I, I love exercise. And yet I know when my trainer comes, I work out a lot harder than if I try and do it just by myself. Results, you got to know where you're going and you got to measure it. Education, we have the best education for business people on the planet bar none. And we are live and we are local. Your coach is local to you. They are live. They're a human being that will work with you. People go, oh, what do you think about AI for coaching? Look, AI might speed things up, but there's no way in the world a computer is going to do a better job than one of my coaches out there in the world. There's no way in the world someone with 20, 30 years experience will not beat that because you know why? intuition. If I'm sitting with you and I'm listening to you, I can pick up the intuitive factor of what does work and what doesn't work. So here's how you decide what level of coaching you need. First of all, what level of community do you want? If you go on a scale of one to five, do I want a low level community, high level community, mid-level of community? Second, Levi's five and ones are still cool. No, Andrew, they are not. <laughs> my kids, my kids always say, as soon as you start using a word, dad, we have to stop using that word, you know, because if, if dad says, oh, that's fat, then holy shit, it's not a cool word to ever use ever again. Anyway, um, accountability, what level of accountability do you want on that? Okay, you might want a level five, you might say, I need one to one accountability, Brad, or you might be self accountability or community accountability results. You know what, Brad, I want to get good results. and I want to get there at a decent speed. Or you might say I need five out of five, I want massive results instantaneously. This determines what level of coaching you need. Now we have coaching programs starting at 100 a month, right through to 10s of 1000s a month for major corporations. Whatever your budget, whatever your needs, whatever your goals, there is a coaching program to suit you. That's why I want you to fill in that questionnaire. That helps us determine with you what level you need. The level you need might be as simple as, I just need to read a book, Brad. That's the level I need right now. Excellent. Start with a book. Or, hey, Brad, this, whatever it might be. This crazy young man, um, yeah, so crazy, he built a $600 million whiskey business. Crazy, isn't he? Such a great marketer. Always look to learn. Learning something is a, learning something new is a great feeling, the feeling of progress. Nothing good ever comes from worrying and sitting there feeling sorry for yourself. Keep positive and keep pushing on and things will turn good. Love that guy. He's crazy as heck, but I do think he's amazing. Would you agree if you're presented with a faster, better way? And this is where you got to type for me again, if you want to put it. Uh, oh, Peter, that's a great one. Create a remarkable experience. Thanks. Good, good analogy. If you want to think this way, if I can show you a faster, better way, would you do it? Of course you would. The answer is yes or yes. So give me a yes. In fact, you can use the actual word yes right now. All right. Type it in. Or if you want to stay creative, stay creative with me. That's the way it is. So. In our short time together that we've had today, I've tried to squeeze in, jam pack as much as possible and to give you more growth and show you your success plan, how it's going to happen for you. The second part of that is even if you just use a tiny amount, the tiniest part of what we've taken to forward today, can you see how your plan is better than it was before you got on here today? See, the reality of the Action Coach system is I don't know what you knew of our system prior to getting on here today, but if this system helps you grow, it's a safe bet that some of this was new and valuable to you, such as the formula for success, such as the formula for growing a business, such as the formula for growing an entrepreneur, such as understanding the four pillars of making it happen. So I need to ask you, was our time together today valuable, enjoyable? Have you got more clarity and confidence that I promised you at the beginning? Well, I'm going to make sure that you get this implemented. Let's focus on implementation now. Even if you can see one or two things that I showed you today, is it fair to say that using this system will give you a significant advantage? I believe it is. So you have two choices. You can pick one or two of the choices. I have absolute confidence that you could take what you learned here today and go out, put into action and get results that you previously thought weren't possible. I'm certain just with what I've covered here with you on the webinar today, left to your own devices and resources, you can make a go at this and do things most people will never be able to do. But if that was the only option, it'd be a worthy ideal to pursue, wouldn't it? If it were the only option, what if there was another option? 
What if there was a better way? What if there was an option that said, you and I and my team, my coaches, we can do this together? What if, okay, rather than just a measly hour, a measly webinar connecting together one time, what if myself and my team played a role in your results? What if we took a responsibility for your success and took an obligation to you getting the outcome that you want for your dreams, your goals, your life, your business? Do you think that if I gave you all the inside secrets, do you think if I taught you everything I discussed today and put all the resources at our disposal and stack the deck in your favor, you'd get there faster? It'd make it more than inevitable that you're successful? If the shortcuts and all the support system, the community, the accountability, the education, if that would get you the results you deserve, if that's such an option for you and you want to hear about it, then I want to know. See, if this is for you, give me a yeah, give me a wave, give me a thumbs up, give me a whole heck yeah, Brad, I want to learn this stuff. Where are you at? What do you want to do? Well, that's why I want to say to you this business coach system, how you can happily and simply build the business and life of your dreams. You know, our business system, we start with a 90-minute diagnostic for everybody. Your first two weeks of coaching are basically for free. Okay, we're going to start your first two weeks coaching. You're going to do a couple of meetings with a coach. You're going to fill in the questionnaire. Some of you have already filled in that questionnaire. And we're going to take you through looking at what it takes to get that thing. We're going to invest that time with you. It's a 90-minute session. And even if I charged you a million bucks for it, it might be worth it, right? What if you could learn? And, and these are just some testimonials, gang. If you jump on our YouTube channel, you can see hundreds of them on there. Hundreds and hundreds of business owners telling you their story. And that's the advantage of us having been here for 30 years doing this stuff. See, it might start with you at Action Club, our 12-week programs. People love our 12-week programs because they're like, I know what I'm doing. I'm buying this. I'm starting here. I'm finishing here. I at least it, it's an easy decision to make, if that makes sense. Maybe you want to grow faster than that. Maybe you want to get there real quick. Maybe you want to get to this thing. So how do you implement how do you use what we've taught here with you today? Okay, how do you get the results that you want to get, like Linda got here in this particular example? Okay, maybe it's one-to-one -one coaching. I don't know what level of coaching you need. And in most cases, you don't either. In fact, if you want to learn more about coaching, Gona, could you please give me, oh, there's the questionnaire link again. Could you please give me the link to the playlist? There's a playlist on our YouTube channel that describes, there's like six videos I did that teach you what is coaching and how does it work? How does it work? So all six videos take you through everything you need to know about coaching. Because if you're like me, you'd like to learn about something before you buy it sort of thing. So that's why there's six videos. And, and going to also, I know there's some people on here today that were contemplating becoming action coaches, investing in a franchise. If you could put that link up as well, there's two playlists we're going to put up. One, if you're looking at coaching, one, if you're looking at the franchise. So if you're going to take charge, thinking about everything you've done, Mike Yardy, this is such a great example. This guy made his money back in the first month. Now he's gone on to create tens of millions for himself and literally hundreds of millions for his investors. Um, Playlist to learn about working with a coach and playlist to become a coach. Thank you, Gona. See, in the right hands, this stuff's worth a million bucks, right? Or in fact, hundreds of millions if you do it over a period of time. John's been with me 18 years. You think about the possibility of learning it. See, if I asked you to invest a hundred grand in this and it made you back a hundred grand this year, that's pretty fair, right? If you, if you invest it and get it back, 100% return, that's definitely fair. However, I'm not in the business charging you 100 grand to get started with this thing. If I said it was 20 grand and it got it back to you in 90 days, would you want to do that? What if I said the whole strategy session was a few thousand dollars, two weeks of coaching, a few grand to get you started? If you made it back in 90 days, like that's 400% return, right? But you need to remember this thing here. What did I tell you my vision was? If I'm living my legacy, it's different for me. See, when you live your legacy, what you understand is this. If you have filled in the questionnaire, every one of you that's already filled in the questionnaire, and I'll give you an extra 15 minutes after we finish for those who didn't finish filling in the questionnaire, your price for this whole thing is... That's right. It's our gift. You invested your time and energy building your business. We're going to give you a gift. 
We want world abundance through business re-education. And we know one thing, if we can show you how to make money when we do something for free, imagine what will happen when you actually join the membership, when you become part of the community, when you actually have someone holding you accountable. And whether the accountability is community accountability or one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching program, whatever it is. But you filled in that questionnaire, the team will reach out to you and they'll schedule a time and you'll go through it and you'll work out what level of coaching is right for you. You see, growing it is, and these are three, the 30X programs are our education programs. As soon as you join membership, you get access to all of the online learning. Now, there's so much that we want to teach you, show you, share with you and help you do. In, in that first 90 days, we tackle the big ticket things that are going to get you massive results in that first 90 days. Uh, that's what we're looking for for you. Um, that's me feeding a crocodile. You know, the Irwin family. Well, Steve made me feed a crocodile with him and uh, unfortunately he passed away a long time ago. This is actually our kids all together. It's my two eldest daughters on the outside and Bindi and Robert. Um, that's us last year with my wife and Terry uh, at uh, the gala in LA. They're doing the gala in Vegas this year. But education is all about being excited about something, seeing passion and enthusiasm helps push an educational message. If you don't see how passionate Steve Irwin was about wildlife and you don't see how passionate Brad Sugars is about business and you succeeding, then you've been on some other planet, right? I could say crikey, I can do all those things, but that's not the point. I want you to know how passionate we are about helping you. See, as we finish up here today, some of you probably in the, I don't know if I need coaching. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. And we're going to make it dead easy for you, okay? Because really, there's only three reasons someone would ever be in a maybe category. Number one is time. Oh, I've got too much happening, Brad. Well, I'll give you a simple solution to that. Make a list of the top 10 things you're doing to grow your business, right? Top 10 things. List them in order. Number one, that's working the best. Number 10 on that list that's working the worst, cross that shit out and write in action coach. Right, That's what you're going to do to grow your business. Get rid of the dumb stuff and put us in. Make time by getting rid of the dumb things and using what we do. Not sure about money. Well, I've made it real easy, okay? First of all, there is no risk with us. Action Coach, we fully guarantee what we do. We either make you more money than you pay us or we work with you for free until you do. No complexity to that whatsoever. But the first thing you do, I've made it so simple, it's free. Webinar is free. First two weeks of coaching is free. Go for your life, get in there, do it. And you know the value of all that stuff. And the third reason, which I find is a little harder for people is they're not sure it's going to work, right? See, that's one of the reasons we guarantee it because you can't decide until you're on the inside. Like if, if you're going to buy a house and you stand outside and you go, oh, this looks good. You can't buy the house from the outside. You have to go inside. Well, that's what we do. By giving you the first two weeks for free, by giving you this webinar for free, we get you inside the whole thing and say, now that you're inside, you can see how it'll work for you. You can't decide that until you've done the coaching sessions. So don't say, oh, I don't know if it'll work for me. Do it and then see how it's going to work for you. So remind yourself of this. Fear and excitement are the two biggest things that come up with massive decisions. The worst thing you can do, though, is let fear win all the time. you got to let excitement win sometimes. If I've got you excited today about the future of your business, that's the best thing I could possibly have done. One of my great mentors also, uh, Dr. Frederick I. Karencott, a Reverend Knight. He was a preacher in the Bronx on the subject of money. And I bought him out of retirement. This is up on Long Island. I bought him out of retirement, and he drove up in his Rolls Royce. Reverend Knight was famous for saying, the reason I drive in a Rolls Royce, and he owned more than 30 of them in his lifetime. So the reason I go in a Rolls Royce is people don't ask as many stupid questions when you show up in a Rolls Royce. It's like, no one asks, do you want that valeted, sir? They know it's getting valeted, you know? He, he, he was such, so great. If you ever get to find any of his old tapes, he's more of a preacher around it. But nothing decisive will happen in your life until you really make a decision. If you commit with Action Coach, we'll commit with you. You become a member, we will take care of you. Our other members will take care of you. The best thing you can do for the poor is to not be one of them. I told you about him, Jim Rohn. I never got a photo with me and Jim. I met him uh, two times in my life, 16 when I first learned from him and 31, I was his opening act in front of 5,000 people in Sydney Convention Center. And I took my notes down to Mr. Rohn and I showed him my notes from when I was 16, where he'd signed them when I was 16 years of age. And I showed them Mr. Rohn and he said, wow, these are amazing. Please call me Jim. I said, yes, Mr. Rohn. Um, some people earn that right. Never wish your life were easier. Wish that you were better.
I wrote that down, stuck it up on a massive thing above my desk when I was a young man. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. If I get better, life gets easier. Business doesn't get easier. You got to get better at business. And Mr. Rowan said, read a book a week for the rest of your life. Well, your next 18 weeks are handled. Read my books. Uh, this was after Will had opened for you too uh, here in Vegas. There are no problems that can't be solved. The world is too full of options. If you can't solve the problem, it's because you haven't found the right option. But the answer is always there. And in this case, my friends, the answer is action coach. My point to you is that you've got to become the best version of you possible. Best version of you possible. If you've got any questions, start typing them in now. I know there were a couple of questions that were sent in beforehand. I will get to them as well. Final, um, one of the greatest leaders I ever met, he was the Prime Minister of Australia uh, for 11 years, uh, three terms. He was voted back in as Prime Minister, uh, Right Honourable John Howard. And he said, you can't wait till market day to fatten the pig. You can't get ready on the day you want to sell. You've got to start building it now so that it's ready for market day. That's the thing. Whew. Questionnaire links there. Playlists are there if you want to learn more about becoming a coach. For those of you who want to learn more about being an action coach, uh, that, that other playlist is there as well. Questions. Let me go to the questions that were already sent in, and then I'll go to any new questions that you've got. Any subject of business, type it in. Uh, first question that came in beforehand. Let me just pull those up. Ta -da, ta -da. Okay, I've already explained the guarantee, so I don't need to answer that part of this question. Price of coaching. Listen, uh, coaching on average, um, again, I've said we've we've got you know programs that start at hundred a month. But most people are around about two or three thousand a month for one-to-one -one coaching. Membership is anywhere from four hundred a month to twelve hundred a month. Our twelve-week programs are, and again, this is hard to say on an international call because, like, there's some of you from South Africa, and you know the rand is worth, I don't know, not much. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I do have a lot of business in South Africa, so I feel for you as well from feeling it real. But, um, you know, a 12-week program is usually around 1200 per person and those sorts of things. But chat with your coach and they'll go through the whole pricing structure with you to help you understand. But it's a, a monthly program and we have a budget for every business. So whatever level you want to get in at, we have something at that level. Like our, our highest level clients, I know, you know, we coach massive multinationals, Google, Mitsubishi, and, and those are at tens and tens of thousands a month because they're having us coach a lot of executives in their organization. So different companies uh, at, at different price points based on your needs, wants, desires. If you just go back to that care thing, how much community do you want? How much accountability do you want? How fast do you want to get to your results? And what level of education do you need? And that sort of gives you a matrix of what level of coaching that, that you're going to need going forward. Um, Second question, Brad, I'm in the dental business. Does coaching apply? Look, coaching melds together the knowledge of the owner of the business and the coach. It doesn't, what industry you're in doesn't matter to us, okay? Marketing, sales, all of these things are core fundamentals of business. You've got the brilliance of your industry. We have the brilliance of business. Combine the two together and you get the level of results you want. But speaking of dentists, we do a great deal with dentists. I know one of my coaches has written a whole book on coaching dentists, uh, but we do a lot with the medical profession, a lot of trades, a lot of construction, uh, insurance, service businesses, restaurants. I own restaurants. I'm just opening another one. Uh, catering businesses, franchise groups. We coach a lot of franchise groups, like the franchise all brings us in to coach the franchisees. We work with a lot of banks. A lot of banks bring us in to coach their customers uh, and educate their customers as to how they do that. So, Whew. all right. Unless there's any other questions, I'm going to say, fill in the questionnaire, meet with your coach, make a decision what level you need to get started from. Questionnaire final link is right there. If you haven't filled it in, you got 15 minutes once we finish to fill that thing in. I've got to jump out of here. I'm going to go and uh, pick the kids up from school. So build a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. That's the ideal. Thanks for listening in. Look forward to having you here. Uh, yes, BizX in Monterey. I will be down there. I will be down in Monterey in a few weeks' time. I'm going to be in Saudi Arabia on Tuesday, I believe. And then I'm going to be in Guyana and uh, Curacao after that. So I love my annual pilgrimage to the Caribbean so I can teach a little bit, have a cigar, have a rum, 
hang out with some of my friends and and uh, get some warm weather, get out of this cold Vegas weather right now. And some people are like, it's never cold in Vegas. It's freezing. I'm an Australian, I grew up in the sun. Anyway, be well, everybody. Thanks for being here with us today. Click that link, meet with your coach, get back with your coach, or if you're looking for the franchise, get back with your recruiter. And uh, I look forward to meeting with you again soon. Take care, bye for now, everybody.